Hey, it's Mr. Alred, and I want to do a series of videos here on the highlights of graphs and lines. Um, we'll be using these later on, so I just want to kind of hit some of the characteristics that will be important in a short and quick fashion, hopefully. So what we're going to cover here are equations of x and y. So that means we're going to have two variables in an equation. Okay. Um, and these equations we're going to graph, and the ones we focus on in this, this set of videos will all be lines. And we're also going to look at x and y intercepts because that's something we can use to graph any um, equation we come across, okay? or at least help us. So I said we're going to graph um, equations of two variables. And I have an equation here, and it's y equals 2x minus 3. So there's two variables. Um, so what we can see here, if we kind of make ourselves a little chart, and I'm going to make a little xy chart. So I'm going to pick some x values, and I'm going to pick um, negative 2, 0, and let's say 3. I don't have to pick any certain numbers, but I just wanted to pick these for um, fun. But I can pick these x values. And what I can do is I can individually plug those x's in for the x in our equation up here. So I'm going to plug these numbers in for y equals 2x minus 3. So when I plug the negative 2 in, I get negative 7. When I plug the 0 in, I get negative 3. And when I plug the 3 in, I get positive 3. So basically what we see here, x values have different y values to go with them. So they're in relationship here formed by the actual equation. Well, one thing we like to do here is we like to put these in a point notation. And a point notation looks like parentheses, x value, comma, y value, in parentheses. And that looks uh, similar to interval notation. Um, but this is a point because it's an x and a y. It's not two x's. It's not start at this x, end at this x, like a number line, it's going to be two directions, as we'll see in a moment. So in all of these, I can write them as a point. Parentheses, negative 2, comma, negative 7, close parentheses. Parentheses, 0, negative 3, in parentheses. Parentheses, 3, 3, in parentheses. So I have x and y values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to this x and y graph over here. And if you're not familiar, the line that number line that goes from left to right is the x and the one that goes up and down is y so in the very center we have zero left and right zero up and down but let's plot the points that we have we have negative two negative seven so we'll go backwards on the x-axis and down on the y <clears throat> so make sure you see how that point that I graph correlates to uh, the negative two negative seven then we have zero negative three and then we have 3, 3. Okay. And I can't say that I did a great job here, um, but I'm going to try and make a line through here. And what I'm using to write with is not very easy uh, to make a straight line, so I'm going to do my best. But yeah, so we take those points that we graphed and connect them. Now, one thing I, I don't want to mislead you with is everything you graph will not necessarily be a straight line. Um, we'll look at the different types of equations we have later on, and that will give us certain characteristics, and we'll know what they're supposed to look like. And um, actually analyzing the equation will help us figure out where it's supposed to be. But for this video, we're just going to focus on straight lines. So... Let's kind of break this down. So to know you have a straight line, you should be able to put it in the y-intercept form of a line. And that is y equals mx plus b, where the x and the y is a series of xy points. Okay, um, But the m here, the M is what we call a rate or a slope. And usually you can write it as a fraction, and it will be a change in Y direction over a change in X direction. 
And we will do that with an example in a moment. And then the B will be a point, uh, which will be a y-intercept. So that's going to be a point on the y-axis. And if we go back to our graph, remember the y goes up and down, and the x goes left and right. So going back to the same example we just had, which was, let's see, 2x minus 3. So making an example of that, y equals 2x minus 3. So if I have it in slope-intercept form, which this is, this is y equals 2 is the m, but we can view it as a fraction as 2 over 1. And the b is a point, and it's a y-intercept. So the b is negative 3, but that gives me the point basically 0, negative 3, because it's going to be on the x-axis. So let's see here. To graph this in a different way, besides calculating points, we want to plot the y-intercept. So we see that as negative 3, so we just come down the y-axis at negative 3. And then we can move to another point using the slope. So remember the slope is a change in y over a change in x. And the y is 2, so from the point I have, I'll go positive 2, and then I'll go over 1, which gives me an additional point. Now, if they're really close together, it's hard to get a straight line, so I can uh, continue the process. I can go up 2 over 1 again. And I can just connect those points, and I'll have something similar to the line I just made. So our steps will be, once we have it in that slope-intercept form, to plot the y-intercept, use the slope to move to another point, and then connect the, the dots, connect the line. <clears throat> Okay. Pretty easy stuff, really. So let's do a couple of examples. Um, this one here is y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 5. So in this one here, we'll have our m, or our slope, as negative 3 over 4. And remember, that's a y over an x. And we'll have our b, which is our y-intercept, in here, as since this is in the correct form, as being 5. So that'll be 0, 5. So here is B, and here is M. Okay. And the X and Y are just the points that would work. So we're going to take the Y-intercept, which is 5, so we're going to go to the Y-axis and go to 5. And then our slope is negative 3 fourths. So we'll go from there to down 3, since this is a negative 3 for the y direction and over 4 to this point. So if it helps you, we can talk about going down 3 and over 4. So negative 3 and over 4. Okay. Um, we can do that again, but we're just going to connect the dots to make our line. Okay. Very quick. <clears throat> Second example here, 3x plus 5y equals 6. Now keep in mind, we want this thing to be in y equals mx plus b form. So that means we need to get the y by itself. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. And I may rearrange it a little bit. Um, but that will give me 5y equals negative 3x plus 6. And I'm going to divide by the 5 everywhere. Um, so I do get it in y equals mx plus b form. And that'll be y equals negative 3 fifths x plus 6 fifths. So we have a slope of negative 3 over 5, which you remember is a y over an x. And we have a b or a y-intercept of 0, 6 fifths. And 6 fifths is a little bit more than 1, so it's not ideal, but it will work for us. Let me see, I made a little mess there. Oop, didn't catch it. See the eraser. There we go. Come on, eraser. There we go. So over here is my x axis, here's my y axis. So the point I have, the y intercept, is 6 fifths, just a little bit more than 1 on y. Okay, we're estimating that. 
Hopefully you can see it. And then the negative 3 fifths says I would go down 3. So let's just kind of do that in the separate color. 1, 2, 3. And then over 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I went down 3. And I went over 5. So now I have another point over here, and I'm estimating it, but I will connect them. And there I have a line. So this one did not start off in y equals mx plus b, but if we put it that way, get the y by itself, like we solved formulas, um, it makes it very easy to graph. Okay. So now I want to do um, a couple more things. <clears throat> X and y intercepts. So... We've worked with y-intercepts no problem. Y-intercepts um, are on the y-axis, which the y-axis is right here going up and down. Um, in these cases, you have an x value of 0 because you're not moving left or right any. So the theory there is that the point would look something like 0 and then whatever goes in the other part. That's supposed to be a question mark. Let's see if I can make it any better. Um, but separately, the x-intercept uh, is on the x-axis, which goes this way. So it's kind of also kind of easy um, or useful to have so you can graph. But that's where the y value would be 0. Okay. So if we put that together, uh -oh, something's frozen up here. Oh, don't, okay, I think we're back. Um, that means we would have an x value, but the y would be 0. And that means we wouldn't move up or down any for y. So we've already found y-intercepts by plugging it into the y equals, let me see the, the other color since that's where we were, um, y equals mx plus b. So if we put in that form, we have the y-intercept. And basically that comes from letting the x be 0, so the mx disappears, so it's just y equals b. Um, but let's take this idea of uh, the y value has to be 0 for an x-intercept, and let's try this. So here is an equation, and it says find the x and y intercepts, and the equation is 5x minus 10y equals 30. So the first thing I want to do is take this thing and put it in y equals mx plus b form. Now, nothing saying I have to to answer this question, but we're going to. Um, so we need to get y by itself. So I'm going to move the 5x over. And that gives me negative 10y equals negative 5x plus 30. And now I still need to get the y by itself. So I'm going to divide by negative 10. Everything. So when I clean that up, the y equals mx plus b that I get is y equals 1 half x minus 3. And that's going to be my y equals mx plus b here, where my b is negative 3. So right there is my y-intercept. 0, negative 3. But I need to solve, and I didn't leave myself a lot of room here. Let's see if I can squeeze it in down here. I need to let y equal 0 to find the x-intercept. So I'm going to take the equation I have, and I'm going to let y be 0. So it'll be 0 equals 1 half x minus 3. And we'll go this way. So I can... Add 3 to both sides, so it'll be 3 equals 1 half x. And then I can multiply both sides by 2, so x will be 6. So my x-intercept will be 6, 0. So I can plot those two points. Um, let me see, y is negative 3, x is 6, and I can make myself a little line here. And if everything works out, we should be able to see the same slope that we have there, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. And there we have it.